so with Tears of the Kingdom releasing soon, I really wanted to replay Breath of the Wild because I thought it would be fun. But I didn't want to just do a normal replay. So, what to do, I thought. And that's when I realized... Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Hyrule Myths, the online internet video game TV show brought back from the dead to take care of some unfinished business. Oh, that's right! I can just rip off YouTubers larger than me! So, enjoy this video where I go on the most torturous journey of my life. Alright, the rules, no pausing. That means no plus button, no minus button, no left, right, or up on the D-pad. If you want a detailed explanation on how the run works, go watch Game Champ's video. She does a lot better job at doing it than me. Step one, rob the first old man we see. But we're not going to rob him of everything he owns, not quite yet. We're just going to rob him of his axe. Now, according to Game Champ, we need to leave the plateau with Magnesis, so after activating the tower, we look around for the bomb shrine for 30 minutes. After doing bombs, we go back to the old man and we say, Hey, we're back for seconds and rob him of everything else he owns. Most importantly, his torch, but we also steal his baked apple, which will be lost in our inventory forever and we only stole it just to flat. We light the torch and use its heat to walk up the cold Mount Hylia, where we find the old man again and rob him of his warm clothing. We do Cryonis, barge into some guy's camp, light our torch on fire, and leave with them chasing after us, trying to make it all the way across the mountain range to the Stasis Shrine, which takes a very long time with how many times I had to reset. H however, guess who showed up in our chat as we did it? So. I'm not what what is how this is how, game champ yo it's actually you holy shit um so I'm very bad at video games so I've needed to check the map so th and and then I reload my save after but that's how many times I've done that I think I reload my save okay that was where I fucking died idiot dumbass. WHAT?! NO! Uh... Wait... YES! LET'S GO! <laughs> RANDOM PATCH OF GRASS! OH HELL YEAH, BROTHER! DIE, IDIOT! No, but I am going to rob you of your saddle. After leaving the Great Plateau with my nieces, we went over to the horse god to pull out the ancient saddle to let our horse teleport to us wherever we go. Dumbass. Come get me, bitch. However, the horse we picked fucking sucks and wouldn't listen to what I told him to do. Halt the tail, shy to a shrine. Using clever use of shield jumps, we were able to get up to this metal chest, which we used to hold the other platforms down in the shrine. Next up, by going to the Hateno dye shop, you could actually change your clothes without pausing. So I did that, putting on the warm doublet, along with some other random things I had gotten. So, the only divine beast in the game that we can do without pausing is Vomito. So, that was my next trick, but in order to defeat the boss of that area, Windblight Ganon, we needed to get enough hearts and stamina to fight it. So, we decided to go around and do shrines to prepare, and I decided to first go to Gerudo Desert to get some of the heat-resistant clothing while doing shrines along the way there. Oh, is this one of the impossible ones? Yeah. This is one of the three impossible shrines in the fucking game. Following Game Champ's advice, I decided to invest in stamina vessels instead of heart containers, and then when I was ready to fight Windblight, I would trade them into the horn statue for heart containers. Timing is critical, read a he shrine. 
This shrine doesn't pose any threat in terms of the challenge itself, but I just want to point out that I suck at video games. For my next step, I wanted to stop at Outskirts Stable on the way to Gerudo Desert because at that stable is one of the only places that can equip the ancient saddle to your horse. Kadaso Shrine, a minor test of strength. The weapon we had at the time was very bad, so we had to go and steal a weapon from a nearby Hinox and return to the shrine. Gino Shrine, on the move. Game Champ, I just want to point out how fucking impossible it is to get this chest to stay on this platform. Next, on the way to Gerudo Desert, I decided to stop by the South Lome Labyrinth so I could pick up the Barbarian Armor. That's a surprise tool that'll help us later. Next, to get into Gerudo Town and get the Desert Vo Armor, we had to get the Desert Vi Armor from the quest in the Bazaar. Trans? Me when trans? However, this armor auto-equips, and if we wanted to go to Rito Village, which is the next place I wanted to go, we would have to go back to Hateno Village and change clothing to get our warm doublet back on. In case you didn't realize, Hateno Village is all the way across the map. With no other choice, I saddled up with the stupidest horse of all time and got on my way. I do! I have Apple! Next, I decided to go to Rita Village to get some cold resistant clothing and do some shrines along the way, so it was time to ride all the way across the map again. Along the way, I threw my sword because I it was about to strike me with lightning and it suddenly disappeared, so I had to run around looking for another sword for another 30 minutes. Where's the sword? It despawned! Cool! Wind Guide, Ka Okeo Shrine. Welcome to the most annoying shrine so far. This shrine equips you with the Korok Leaf, which once you pick it up, you can't unequip it without breaking since you can't throw it. The worst part of the shrine is that it would be trivial if I had bomb arrows. Unfortunately, I did not, and I wanted to do it without it. The first problem here is this bombable wall. Since I couldn't break it, I couldn't proceed with the shrine. My first idea was to shoot these explosive barrels off of the platform with arrows. However, the arrows were too light. My next idea was to take one of the normal barrels and throw it at the explosive barrels. However, Link was not strong enough to throw it up there. My next idea was to bring an explosive barrel from earlier in the shrine to blow up the wall. However, it was too heavy to stay on the floating platform. I rewatched Game Champ's video and her solution for this shrine was to use her metal Lizal boomerang and knock it off. However, I did not have one. So I came up with my own solution, which is to stand right underneath this barrel and use the Korok leaf to push it off the platform, blowing both myself and the wall up. Unfortunately, we were met with another bombable block right here in the floor, which impeded our way going forward. So I said fuck that and skipped that entire section. However, it took me a while to realize that 
holding the jump button while the platform was rising up would make you jump higher, which was the only way to reach this little ledge and skip the section. In her video, Game Champ says that this next bit is dev intended, however, I took a long time to figure it out. Embrace your destiny! Holy fuck! We fucking did it, boys! We had to read a village and buy some warm clothing, but to put it on, we have to go all the way back to Hateno again. Might as well do some shrines along the way. Build and release Doombatog Shrine. To do this shrine, we need a boomerang. You see, metal boomerangs have the power to push things even if Link isn't touching it. Luckily, this nearby Lizalfos has a boomerang, but we need him to unwillingly give it to us. There's some shock arrows in this nearby camp here, so glide in, steal the shock arrows, and run away before they can call the police. Show this Lizalfos your joy buzzer trick, and he'll be so happy that he'll give you his boomerang. Using the infinite power of the boomerang, you're able to push this button down by sheer force of will. Aim for the moment, Shayloya Shrine. Using the infinite power of the boomerang, you're able to push this ball into its slot. Be sure to pick up your boomerang after, though. I then spent 15 to 30 minutes trying to get up onto this monster encampment to get a chest with bomb arrows in it before realizing, oh wait, I have a boomerang. I can just bring the chest down to me. Shatter the heavens, Yanaga Shrine. We actually don't have the things required to do the shrine yet. Also, unfortunately, the shrine is in an island in the middle of Lake Hylia. We might have been completely fucked with both saves for having us trapped on this island, if not for this raft and our handy boomerang. We finally made it back to Atena Village to change clothes, but before returning to Hebra or Gerudo, I decided to move to Laneru and the Akala region and do those shrines. He is on the short list of men I would have sex with. So, we make our way to Zora's Domain, and I was shocked at not having played this game for a very long time, at how much Sidon fucking interrupts you. Like, bro, I get it, you're hot as fuck, but let me play the fucking video game. Pushing power, Knees Yoma Shrine. Honestly, the hard part of this shrine isn't the pushing of the ball down the hill. It's more trying to shield jump up to this platform. It's so precise. There we go. Daga Keek's Blessing, Daga Keek Shrine. Welcome to the first shrine I threw in the towel for. The problem was simple. There's a ceremonial trident in the middle of this river that you need to even access the shrine. Unfortunately, since it's in the middle of the river, the intended method to get it is to use a cryonis block in the middle of the river and then fish it out with magnesis from there. One small problem, we can't use cryonis. The solution that Game Champ came up with was to push this box off the cliff, land on the box, and move the trident closer to the edge before you fell off. Unfortunately for me, I would find that I would slip off the box way before I even had the chance to grab the object with Magnesis. I tried to do this so many times, and I never came anywhere close. Since I'm only trying to complete as much as I can before Tears of the Kingdom releases, and not trying to do every single shrine like Game Champ did, I decided to throw in the towel. Also, I felt like me pushing a box into a river over and over would not be very interesting stream content, and I wanted to be interesting when streaming, so I, that was another reason why I threw in the towel here. I'm sorry if you feel let down, I let down myself here as well, but I wanted to continue the game, and that's what we're going to do. No, that's wrong. At least, that's what I would say if I didn't decide to try a few more times at the beginning of the next stream. And, 
lo and behold, just when I was about to give up again, I fucking did it. Where's the box? Oh, it landed in the river, okay. I did it! I fucking did it! I fucking did it! Let's fucking go! Here we go. Metal makes a path! Moloki Shrine. I spent forever just running at the boulders with three hearts like an idiot before I realized that I could just rest at the stable, refill my hearts, and then tank the boulder hat. Get up, Link. Get up, get up, get up. Oh my god. Give me that fucking spirit orb. So do you remember how I said that I would be doing as much as possible before Tears of the Kingdom came out? Well, that's about to change because after I decided that, this happened. I like your attitude, kiddo. I'll show my thing off right. So yeah, now the challenge ends when this comes out, which is in a week of when I'm recording this voiceover, and I won't be able to do as much of the challenge run as I thought. I'm sorry. That being said, if I have any spare time in my streaming schedule and there's no games out that I want to play, I might continue this in an episode too. Retogzumo's Blessing, Retogzumo Shrine. This one isn't really hard because it requires a specific trick, it's more hard because it requires very good gameplay. You see, normally we've been running away from enemies like a little sissy baby, but while we're carrying this ball, we don't have the luxury of doing that. Fuck. No. No, 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 no. No! I was right there! I eventually got the idea to kill some of the more troublesome enemies before running back, grabbing the ball, and then running all the way to the pedestal. While it was still very difficult, I did eventually make it to the end. We're safe. No! Fuck! You did it. You fucking did it. You fucking did it. Whoa! We then did the Labyrinth Shrine in the Akala region before going all the way back to the Hebra region. We didn't have fire to melt this ice, but that was no problem as we were easily able to get onto the tower anyway. We cleaned up the final labyrinth before doing a bunch more shrines in the Heber region. Shift and lock, Shagema Shrine. You're supposed to freeze this metal block on this rail in the air with stasis. However, we can easily just let it sit on this platform, run down and grab the key, and then leave before the block has a chance to fall on our heads. A major test of strength, Goma Asa Shrine. To enter the shrine, I paraglided in from above. However, when I exited, there was a big problem. I had used the last of my fire arrows to enter the shrine in the first place, and I didn't have any way of getting out. Furthermore, since I entered the shrine, both prior autosaves had me in this icy cage. If I couldn't find a way out, it was RIP RUN. Luckily for me, the game I was playing was The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, so I was able to Breath of the Wild my way out of there. Steady thy heart, Makara Shrine. 
I fucking suck at parrying lasers, and my sword would always break after defeating all four of these guys, and I needed it for the shrine puzzles. That means I had to magnesis my sword up to press this button while under constant fire from the Guardian Scouts. Luckily though, I was able to do it, and after that, the shrine was smooth sailing. There was another one! <laughs> yeah, uh, pretend you saw nothing. Then, I stocked up on bomb arrows for the eventual Windblight fight, and then decided to do shrines in the Gerudo area. Two bombs show Dante Shrine. This shrine requires us place a luminous stone on that pedestal down there. However, we cannot place items because we cannot hold items, so what do we do? You fool! You really thought I needed my hands to hold shit? No. Instead, I can activate my ultimate weapon, going full caveman brain and bashing two rocks together until I achieve the desired result. Unfortunately, the following shrine requires bomb arrows, which I did not have equipped, so we'll need to come back here later to do it. And that's actually going to be the end of this video. I wanted to end the video with a huge climactic battle against Windblight Ganon, but because of Xenoblade coming out so soon, I wasn't able to get there. I kind of underestimated the task at hand and how long it would take me to complete. This video was really fun to make, though. I might return for an episode 2 if time ever opens up in my streaming schedule, but between Xenoblade, Tears of the Kingdom, and Rain Code, I probably won't be able to continue this challenge for a long time, so don't expect an episode 2 anytime soon. Again, a huge shout out to GameChamp for creating this challenge as well as helping me along the way, both through using her stream VODs as reference as well as speaking with her, so thank you very much. I promise, not all of my content is ripping off of you. Special thanks to all Patreon backers, including fucking nobody. I don't have a Patreon.